a rule change, a playing rules update is what they're actually calling it. This comes from the SEC officiating's official Twitter account in conjunction with the NCAA, and it got people hot, and I'm not going to lie. When I first read it, I had the same reaction as most people. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, they released this playing rules update, and it says this. This is all it says. No wonder people got up in arms. This is all it says, okay? I'm reading directly from this release. Defenseless player. A defenseless player is one who, because of their physical position and focus of concentration, is especially vulnerable to injury. When in question, a player is defenseless. Examples of defenseless players include, but are not limited to, and here's the new line. A player in the act of or just after throwing a pass. This includes a player in a passing posture with focus downfield. So... That got people hot. And my first thought was, wait, what? Are you, what? Are you saying you can't hit quarterbacks? No, that is not what they are saying. So, take a step back, take a deep breath. Your favorite defensive player can hit the quarterback still, legally. This is a new application, though, to targeting. This is a new application to targeting. Okay, but there's a big problem with this still a huge problem with this new rule involving quarterbacks. So I pulled up the rule book just to make sure I had my bearings correct. I pulled up the rule book. The line, the headline here literally is what is targeting? And here is the one that makes me really mad. Targeting and making forcible contact to head or neck area of a defenseless player. I remember that phrase, defenseless player. No player shall target and make forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless opponent. With the helmet, forearm, hand, fist, elbow, or shoulder. This foul requires that there be at least one indicator of targeting. Here is one of those indicators. Leading with helmet, shoulder, forearm, fist, hand, or elbow to attack with forcible contact at the head or neck area. Generally speaking, that sounds fine, right? We don't want players to have head injuries. Head injuries are objectively bad. That's fine. Targeting... It has actually worked. I know it's frustrating to some people, myself included. The targeting penalty has worked in college football. There are fewer of them. There are fewer of those injuries. It has worked. What has always frustrated me about college versus the pro game is that players get kicked out of games. They get removed from games, and if it's in the second half, they get suspended for the next one by oftentimes making a regular football play mark robinson who we referenced earlier in the show former Ole miss linebacker was kicked out of the louisville game last year for making a football play the running back though lowered his target area and he was high so they kicked him out of the game errol thompson got kicked out of a game for mississippi state i believe two years ago if i remember correctly for the most innocent football hit Of all time. I mean, it was pathetic that he got kicked out of the game for it. But targeting is working. I don't think players should be kicked out of the game. Here's my issue with this new application. Deeming a quarterback in the act of throwing a football. A defenseless player that is now under the guise of targeting. How often do you see. Whether it be a blitzing linebacker. Defensive lineman. That's getting pressure on the quarterback. But they know they're not going to get there in time. So what do they do? Get their hands up. They jump and try to swat the ball down. They try to bat the ball down at the last second. And often, those players miss. Often, they miss. And sometimes, 
they will make contact with the upper shoulder, neck, or head area of the quarterback with their hands or their forearms trying to bat the ball down. What this rule does, if I'm reading their rule book correctly, I've got it in front of me, they say targeting means a player takes aim at an opponent for purposes of attacking with forcible contact that goes all that mumbo jumbo. But the important thing, leading with the helmet, shoulder, forearm, fist, hand, or elbow, forcible contact at the head or neck area. Maybe there's going to be some ambiguity. And Caleb says to attack implies intent, which, of course, you know, in real time with how fast the game is, you you can't. So what this says to me, maybe they don't officiate it this way, but the words that they are using, if a defender with his hand, because hand is used in their fist forearm, makes forcible contact with a quarterback's helmet. It's targeting, and he will be ejected from a game. So think about it like this. Ole Miss linebacker, whichever one you want to name. Troy Brown, we'll go with him. He gets called on a blitz, gets through the A-gap. Quarterback's going to get the ball in time, though, so he jumps up in the air, misses the ball, And because he is moving so fast and the game happens so fast, he misses the ball and his hand hits the quarterback in the side of his helmet. Hard. Hits him hard in the side of his helmet. He gets kicked out of the game. We're targeting. That is what these words say. Take Crumity if he's healthy, which you hope he is. Not entirely sure how many games he's going to miss, but when he's back and when he's healthy, Beats his, beats the man in front of him. Gets past the offensive guard. Trying to bat a ball down. And his hand hits the quarterback's helmet. It's targeting. Because a guy his size with his athleticism, if he makes contact when he's running full speed, it's forcible. And now the rule says... these guys are going to get kicked out of the game? Targeting's already poorly enforced. And now you've added something like this, and I promise you it's going to happen in week one. A guy's going to get... that, That situation happens all the time. It's going to happen in week one, and a kid is going to be kicked out of a game for missing a ball, trying to swat it down, and instead making contact with his hand on the quarterback's helmet. Or maybe his neck. That happens all the time. And it should not lead to you getting kicked out of a game. Uh, Dale from the Delts is asking, where's the confirmation that they don't mean you can't hit a quarterback while throwing? Because that rule, they when they re- made that release, they did a very poor job of talking about w- when a defenseless player applies. And they're talking about targeting. You can still tackle a quarterback while he is throwing. You still can do that. It's it's a targeting situation. It is not just you can't go tackle the quarterback anymore. It's a good question. So you can lead with a flying kick? Yeah, apparently apparently so. Apparently you can go kick the guy because they didn't mention feet. But I'm sure there's some unnecessary roughness clause in there as 